Hey guys, so I want to show you how to use Express Session, this library, um, in conjunction with a GraphQL server. And this is what I like to use instead of JWT tokens. And it's a little bit different because now you're going to be storing any data um, about the user on your server and not in the token. Because with JWT tokens, you actually embed it or encrypt in the token, and so you can access this data from the React application or JavaScript, any of that. With this, it's all server-side, and it's all stored server-side. So it makes some of the things a little bit different. But let's jump into the code and see how this works. So here is an example of what I had um, with the JWT token, but now I swapped it out with using Express Session, and we're going to see how this works. So here is me adding session. It is uh, middleware for Express. So uh, app.use, and then I pass in this uh, session object. Uh, the name is what you want the cookie name to be. Um, you probably want to change this to uh, something random, or just I just did a QID, um, basically, so it's different than what everyone else's is. That way, uh, people don't know right away, right? It's I think it's fine to, to keep it have like ID in there though. Um, and then a session secret. So this is just a string, random string, um, that is used to sign your token and make sure it's secure. And then I have a few settings right here. Resave, this is just so um, it every time you have a session, it doesn't, uh, every time they make a request, it doesn't resave the session. And then save uninitialize, this is kind of a choice. So how the sessions work is it won't save anything until you actually add data. And that's only if you say false here. So this is how I like to do it. So basically, I'm not tracking the user until they log in. But you could make this true, and then you can do any kind of checks before they log in, for example. Um, and that's a fine way to do it as well. Uh, but for now, I'm not doing anything until they log in. And that's by setting save uninitialized to false. And then you'll notice this will look very similar. These are just the settings that are for cookies. So next you'll notice I don't even need cookie parser at all. In fact, it handles all the cookies itself. And so you'll notice I just add like custom little middleware right here to console log rec.session. And what this is, is the session object. This is something that this middleware adds, and this will basically be where all of our data is accessed through. And so you'll notice when I pass in the context, I actually don't need to send the response. All I care about is the request. Okay, so then how do I actually save some data in this, right? Well, in my register function, um, and now instead of creating a token and all that jazz, I just get my request object, and I say request.session.userID, and I set it equal to user.id. So it is now stored in the session. And how this works is anytime it detects a change in this object, it'll automatically save this for you. So in this case right here, this session would be saved. And you may be asking, where is it saved? Well, by default, it's just going to be like an object that the uh, session library holds for you. But uh, if you want to use this in production or um, in a real scenario, you'd want to switch this out with either a database or a Redis. And if we come over here real quick, they have a whole bunch of what are called connectors at the bottom. And these are all the different things where you can store uh, the session data in. So MongoDB, um, pretty much anything you want to, you can store it. And uh, But by default, it's just in memory in some object that they have. So here, it would save the user ID. Um, and then how would I access this user ID on further requests, right? Well, that session object is now going to have that user ID in it. So I just say if request.session.userID, and if it's there, uh, we just send it back. So this is the same thing I had before, uh, the checking whether the user ID. So let's take a look at this in action, and I think it'll make a lot more sense. So here my server has just started up, and we're going to just look at the logs so we can see um, when this is called, what the session looks like. Okay, so here's the application, uh, the simple React application I had where uh, we can see authenticated pages and whatnot. So here you'll notice there's no cookies or anything. 
So first, if I just go to the off page, it says, hey, you don't have any cookie. And you'll notice there's no cookies here. But uh, we did just make a request to the server. And so we can see here is the session. And you'll notice there's no data except for like this empty cookie object. And we told it not to save uninitialized. So we said false here. Um, and that's why the session was not stored because we didn't make any change to it. But if we had set this to true, um, this would actually store this cookie and the user would have uh, an ID right here. Um, but we didn't, so uh, we have to wait till there's a request. So if I come back over here, we can just refresh and I'm just going to now make a submission. So now you'll notice there is a QID. So that's the name we specified earlier. And there's this garbage value thing here, right? So this is actually meaningless. This is basically just the key um, to what we're storing in the session. Um, so we basically pass that key to the session middleware and it actually gets the data for us and puts it in uh, the session object. So now um, you'll notice here is that um, session right there. It did not have a user ID in it, but the next request I make so if I come to the off page, you'll notice it now sees my ID. And we printed out this object. So you'll notice here's that cookie that we saw earlier, but now there's an extra thing called user ID in there. So that is how uh, the Express Session Middleware works with uh, GraphQL and this stuff. And maybe I'll just show you guys what this save uninitialized thing is doing. Uh, these are kind of like some default settings that I really like, but we could turn this to true if we wanted to. And so we'll let this restart. And if I come over here and clear my session and I refresh, you'll notice it could not find my cookie, but it did just add a new um, cookie there. But my cookie is meaningless right now. Uh, it just doesn't have a user ID in it. And we can see here's the cookie in each one and this time the cookie is not changing it's the same cookie each time uh, because we actually saved a cookie for it and again if I put this as false let this restart and get rid of this we wouldn't assign the user a cookie until the session object has changed and it'll save automatically okay so it refreshed so now if I'm refreshing we get no cookie no matter how many times I do this Okay, so a quick recap of how this is working. We add this middleware to Express that will basically handle every single request that comes in. And it will check if there's a cookie. If there's a cookie, um, it will uh, take that cookie, look it up in the wherever it's being stored. So that might be Redis. In this case, the default is just in memory some object. Um, it'll put the data in this request.session. Uh, if it can't find it or there's invalid one, It'll just put, as we saw here, a blank cookie, for example. Um, and then we can do whatever we want with this session. So we can look at it, which we did in auth hello, to make decisions. Or we can update the session, and that's what we did here. And then that will save the cookie. And forever now, whenever that person makes a request with that cookie, it'll have the user ID in there. So that's it for this video. Um, I think this should work with uh, Prisma and GraphQL Yoga. So that's what I want to do tomorrow is try it out and show you guys how you might change the uh, default authentication template with Prisma to be using uh, this instead of uh, JWT tokens. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.